and amen again. We are grateful to God for the opportunity to be out this morning, give him the praise and the glory for all the things that he has done, is doing in our lives. He just keeps on blessing us. I was thinking this morning about how these bodies are magnificently made. I mean, this process is just duplicated over and over and over again. We are, I, I know it's such a sex, just because look around, look how many of us there are on planet Earth. I mean, and we live, most of us live an average life, a full life, amen. And, uh, you know, all the systems, most of the systems work really well, you know, so that, that we can, we, we, sh we have shared experiences, amen, where we, uh, you know, uh, if we start to communicate about what's going on in our bodies, we can relate because we, we, we seem to experience a lot of the same things. Amen. You go to a doctor because he's seen so many of us that show up there with the same kind of report about what's wrong with us. And then he's, they've worked with us to re alleviate that pain or get rid of it or cause healing to come in our body. Amen. It's because we sh have a shared existence. Amen. And we just thank God for all that he has done just to make us the way he has and to keep us going, amen. And how do we thank him? Well, we give him the praise and the glory by obeying his commandments, walking in obedience to him. Any parent, amen, who has children, that's how they, that's how they, 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 they find themselves proud of their children because the children meet their expectations. Now, I, I agree that it's not our, we should not expect our kids to be many us, <laughs> little me's, <laughs> amen, should be the best them they can be, but at the same time, there are criteria that we look at for community and for family and things that we expect them to maintain most of those. Amen. We're coming to you this morning from, amen, Cleveland, Texas, of course, here in the Meeting Place Church up here on East Henderson, 1521. And uh, we're going to be looking at the book of 1 Peter, chapter 1, verses 13 through 25. Amen. Verses 13 through 25. Five. Because this is a this is a this is interesting. Our topic has to do with why should I be holy? Amen. We're gonna be looking at verse 16 with emphasis, but then we're gonna, of course, do the rest of the verse. So let's read verse 16 of First Peter chapter one. It reads, Because it is written, Be ye holy, for I am holy. <laughs> Dear God, our question today, our topic in the form of a question is why should I be holy? And that verse pretty plainly answers it for us, because it is written, Be ye holy as I am holy. Thus you say unto us, O God, it is upon us to walk in obedience or not. You have given us the ability to choose, dear God. But of course, dear God, when we choose wisely, we have blessings, and we don't choose so wisely, dear God, we chose to walk in more disobedience, then there are ramifications for those negative things to happen in our life. We thank you, O God, that you have given us the ability, dear God, to reason uh, and amongst ourselves, even, dear God, what is right and what is wrong, dear God, and what is best for us and what is not, that we might have a good opportunity to choose, amen, your way. We ask it in Jesus' name that you look upon us and strengthen us only you can, keep us, and may this word open up into our lives, to God, our understanding, our minds, to God, and giving us a better opportunity, to God, to walk in obedience to your word. For you said in this, we love me, if we love you, to keep your commandments, O oh God. This we ask in Jesus' name, amen, and amen. Let's look at verse 13. Why should I be holy? Begin with verse 13. Wherefore, gird up the loins of your mind, be sober, and hope to the end for the grace that is to be brought unto you at the revelation of Jesus Christ. Hope toward the end of the revelation that's going to be brought to you about Jesus Christ. Look forward to that. Expect that. Desire that. That revelation of who Jesus Christ is. Just great up the loins of your mind. In other words, get yourself together. Get your act together. Look, look in terms of you. Look inwardly. This is not about looking all around on this one. This one is all about us doing what we need to do, amen, to communicate uh, with Christ and to say to him that we want to be his. That's what that's all about. So we have to look forward to him coming. And when that revelation of him shows up, amen, then we need to embrace it. Verse 14, as obedient children, not fashioning yourselves according to the former lust in your ignorance. Do that as obedient children. You know what that's all about being obedient? It's about doing what's asked of you as it is asked of you. Hmm? Do what? In the way that it is asked. In other words, don't just do what I said. Do it like I say. 
Because if you don't do it like I want it done, you're really not doing what I said. Too many times we, we have a way of uh, manipulating, amen, instructions. Huh? We, we're going to do it, but I'm going to do it my way. No, that's not the way it goes. It's, <laughs> we have a saying that we use, my way or the highway. My way or the highway. Do what I want or hit the road, Jack, so to speak. Get out of here. You're not going to do my way? You may as well not do it at all. And that's what God is saying too to us. This is, uh, he's given us commandments with, spe with specifications in there on how to conduct ourselves here on planet Earth amongst each other and before him. And he expects us to follow those directions to the letter. Amen. Dot every I and cross every T. Any that you leave uncrossed or undotted because you chose to do that will find you walking in disobedience to him. So as obedient children, not fashioning yourselves according to the form of lusts in your ignorance mm -hmm, before you didn't know and you had all this lust going on and you were going ahead following the lust just whatever you want you feel like you're going after driven by the body's desires amen he said don't do that no more now verse 15 but as he which hath called you is holy so be ye holy in all manner of conversation as he is holy you be holy as he is Holy, you be holy. Be like him. Hmm? He's given us directions on how to do that. We can only do it to the point that, that our bodies and our minds will allow us. But to that point, we need to conform. We need to walk in that. It amazes me how parents can get frustrated with disobedient children, and yet they, being the children of God, walk in that same manner concerning God's will for them. Hmm? I remember one time I was going to whip my child for, for doing something, and, and I'm talking about how, how we chastise children, I'm not talking about abuse or anything. And, and, and just as I was raising my little strap or whatever to give them a whipping, amen, I, 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 and I was saying, did not tell you whatever it was, I don't even remember what it was now, but as I was saying that, I heard the voice of God speaking in my mind, did not tell you, and I was like, I was caught, I was struck, I was like, oh, wow. Guess what I did? I whipped the child anyway. And then I said, Lord, I'm going to do what I have to do. You do what you have to do. Huh? That needs to be our mindset. Don't try to get out of it. If you deserve a whipping, you deserve a whipping. Just like that child. And then you go back and say, do you still love me? And typically what happens? Yes. Not right away. <laughs> it takes a little. They need to get past that moment for a bit. But then they say, yeah, I love you, daddy. I love you, mama. And you say the same, then the same thing. Sometimes parents would say, what? This is going to hurt you more than it hurts me. And a lot of times it does. You don't want to strike your child. You don't want to chastise your child. At the same time, you cannot have that child thinking they can do what they want, no matter what the rules and the regulations that govern their actions say. Hmm? Amen. Somebody said, it's better that I whip you now than have the policeman whip you later. I said to the children at the community center where I volunteered, I said, you know, if you do, I mean, if you control yourself, no one else has to. Isn't that what the, our jail system is all about? Controlling, putting controls on people. Amen. And how do we do that? We govern where they can go and where can, we don't give them access. Huh? We put them in a little box and say, that's it, live in there. You don't know how to act on the outside? Live in that box. It's all about control. But if we control ourselves, no one else has to. People who don't break the law, typically, typically, we know there's all that stuff going on out there, but typically those who don't break the law don't end up in jail. That being said, because we know other stuff happening out there, there are some people who are in there wrongly. Not going to go down that path right now, but that is the fact. So let's move on. Verse 16 says, because it is written, be ye holy, for I am holy. Hmm? Walk in alignment with my will. Jesus walked in alignment with the will of his father. What did he say? Huh? I don't do anything that my father didn't tell me to do. The thing that I'm doing, I'm doing what he says. Huh? At the end of the day, it's God's way or the highway. And if his son, his only begotten son, had to walk in obedience to him or be found himself in sin, the sin of disobedience, how much more so should we have to do that? We who have already sinned and fallen to the outside want to get back in. Why would you do the same thing that caused you to be out in the first place? Why would we do the same thing that caused us to go astray in the first place? What we need to do is look at what we've done wrong, look at what we need to do right, Huh? 
and start doing that which is right and avoiding that which is wrong, avoiding those that would lead us in the wrong path. Verse 17, and if ye call on the Father who without respect of persons judgeth according to every man's work, past the time of your sojourning here in fear, if you call on the Father who without respect of persons judgeth according to every man's work, huh? According to every man's work, without respect of person. Lord have mercy. You can't impress God. He already knows about you. He knows more about you than you know about you. So it's up to us then to walk in obedience to his will. Amen. And, 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 and then he said, verse 18, for as much as you know that you were not redeemed with corruptible things, uh-huh, as silver and gold from your vain conversation received by tradition from your fathers, huh? You got in this mess because you followed what your daddy did. Uh -huh. As he walked away from God, so did you. As he transgressed against the will of God, so did you, so did I. He says, but you know what? we weren't redeemed from that with corruptible things. In other words, we go to jail. I mean, sometimes you can, you can pay the bail. You got arrested. You can go down and you can pay money and they let you out. You know, even if it's just until the time of the trial. And sometimes you can pay it off and off and you don't we won't even go to jail. Amen. But, but that's with silver and gold, things that can be and are corruptible. He says, you weren't redeemed, amen, with that stuff. Uh-uh from the vain conversation received by tradition with your father. He said, but with the precious blood of Christ as of a lamb without blemish and without spot, we were redeemed by the blood of Christ because the only way we could be redeemed is through death. Huh? It was upon us. We were going to die. He came and died in our place. Death. Blood had to be shed. His blood was shed that we might be saved. How dare we, amen, say we receive in that redemption and then go back and do the same thing all over again. Christ said, you got in that mess by following the vain conversation of your fathers. Look at number 20. He says, who verily for, was foreordained before the foundation of the world. Christ, who came to redeem us, he was verily ordained before the foundation of the world, but was made known in these last times for us, for you, huh? He, it, from the foundation, from the beginning, knowing that we would sin, he, he was ordained. He was already set forward to come forward and give us an opportunity to come back together again. How, however, he says he wasn't made known until these times. We know that the, 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 the Jews, they, mean, they were walking along, coming along, and all, they were looking for that hope to come, the Messiah to come and all that, but he wasn't made known unto them until the time that he was, this time of these writings that ever so. Verse 21 says, Who by him do believe in God that raised him up from the dead and gave him glory that your faith and hope might be in God. Who by him do believe in God. Huh? We who do believe in God, amen, that raised him up from the dead and gave him glory that your faith, our faith, and hope might be in God, seeing ye have purified your souls in obeying the truth through the Spirit unto unfeigned love of the brethren. See that ye love one another with a pure heart fervently. You see what he's saying? Who by him do, God, do believe in God. So by Jesus Christ, we believe in God in obeying the truth through the Spirit Spirit, the Holy Spirit, who is what God is into all truth, right? Unto unfeigned love of the brethren. Unfeigned love of the brethren. Unfeigned love of the brethren. Sometimes, amen, we struggle with love, huh? We struggle. We just love. And, and now listen, <laughs> he's key. This, and he talked all about what Jesus did before he was foreordained. He came and he died. And, and it, it, it's his will that we should be saved. Amen. His father's will that we should be saved and, 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 and how that, amen, it was through the blood and, and so forth. And yet, amen, and yet we find ourselves, amen, not, not, that's not enough by itself, huh? No, no. He said through unfeigned love of the brethren, not hypocritical, but genuine. Unfeigned means not hypocritical, but genuine love of the brother. Oh, wow. We say we love. 
but our actions don't prove it. Our walk does not agree with our talk. Amen. We talk a good game. Amen. And we get all kind of following and we get funds raised and all of that. But at the same time, when we go out there and we walk, we are judgmental. Amen. We don't want to be wrongly accused, wrongly judged, but we do the same thing that we don't want done unto us. Hmm? Do unto others as you would have them do unto you. But we find ourselves being judgmental. It's easy to judge others in things that you, that you believe you are not guilty of. We do not, amen, in a jury pool, we do not call up murderers, amen, to judge a murderer. We do not call up rapists to judge a rapist. We do not call up thieves, amen, to be in judgment and pass judgment on thieves. But we judge others who sin. We who are guilty of sin ourselves. Why does God say don't judge one another? Because you're not worthy to judge somebody else. But he will judge. He who is holy in all things, he will judge all of us. Amen. According to his righteous judgment. Amen. And in this verse here, he talks about us. Amen. Uh, having unfeigned love of the brethren. He says, see that you love one another with a what? With a pure heart and fervently. Oh, Lord, have mercy. He doesn't want you just to love, but he wants us to have a fervent love. Amen. One for the other, but that's not how we roll a lot of time, huh? Amen. We got we got qualifications. We love you if, huh? He wants us to have fervent. Talked about it. it said very hot, glowing, exhibiting or marked by great intensity of feeling. Can you really say you love fervently your brother and sister? Can I? Can we truly say we love them fervently? Or is it kind of a passion? Yeah, I love you. <laughs> you know I love you. <laughs> and then you go off and do what you want to do anyway. Hmm? God says unto us, love them fervently. Love each other fervently. And then he says, if you love me, keep my commandments. That, that's keep some. <laughs> keep them all. If you fervently love him, you keep them all. You work on it. You desire it. And it starts in your mind, in your heart first. You make the commitment to do the will of God so that if you fail according to the flesh, at least according to the spirit, you were holy. You were right. And how else can we be holy anyway, except according to the spirit? Amen. God loves each and every one of us. Loving your brethren fervently. Amen. He says in verse 23, being born again, not of corruptible seed. That's what we want you to be born again, not of corruptible seed, but of incorruptible by the word of God, which liveth and abideth forever. The word of God. And we believe that Christ is what? The living word of God. Huh? So don't have that corruptible seed going on. He says, for all flesh is as grass and all the glory of man as the flower of grass. The grass withereth and the flower thereof falleth away. Last verse, verse 25. But the word of God, the word of the Lord, endures forever. And this is the word which by the gospel is preached unto you. This is the word that is preached unto you. That word that is the living word of God that endures forever. Now what you going to do with it? Do we really want to end up in hell because we walked in disobedience? There are parents who love their children and yet they disown them. They disown them because of their actions, because of their choices, their negative choices. You did not meet my expectations that weren't, that, that weren't grievous. They were just like, treat people right. <laughs> don't kill nobody. Don't steal. Hey, Amen. Don't be whipping up on people. Don't be brutal. Don't be. Just live a good, wholesome life. Love people. Walk in love among. You can't walk in love amongst us. We're going to get you up out of here. You can't just hang up in here beating up on folk and killing people. And all. No, 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 no. We got a place for you. Guess what? God has a place for those who walk in disobedience for him. Those who walk in disobedience to the word of God, the will of God, he has a place for you. And in that place, you will be absent. Just as we, <laughs> Lord have mercy, we have, people have family members that want to get to see them in jail, but they can't get to see them. Hmm? They want to come out and see us, but they can't. They're separate. There's a void between them and us. A barrier. You can't just, you go there trying to get in there to see them. The guards with guns keep you out. Hmm? Lord have mercy. Guess what? We get separated from God and from those who live in the glow of God, in the holiness of God. We get separated from them. 
Amen. The, the, the brother was there. He said uh, he, he died. Poor ladder. He, he, the rich man wouldn't give him anything. He died. And he's about to end Abraham. But he, he lifted up his eyes. And then, then the man, the rich man looked at him and said, well, listen, would you please give me something to drink? It's hot down. He said, I can't. They said, what? He said, they said, they said, asked that he would come and, rather, and, and give him something to drink. He said, I can't because there's a gulf between you and me, you and him. And, and he can't come to you. You can't go to him. That's the way it's going to be. Those who end up in hell, they won't be able to get to the heavenly, and the heavenly won't be able to touch the hell. And then he says, well, go and tell my brethren so they don't come to this place. He loved his brethren enough for them to, to not want them to come. And what he said, the preacher said, he said, the same ones who talk to you are down there to talk to him, to them. And if they won't hear, amen, the one that's down there telling the word, they won't hear if somebody comes from the dead. God is just saying he loves us so much. Why should I be holy? Why should I live holy? Because it is the will of God for me. That's it. That's the way I access God and the things of God, by walking in holiness. Hmm? I mean, we come to, to Christ, amen, unholy, and we get saved, then our holy walk begins. What do we do when we come saved? Time, the same thing, we are born again and become holy. We raise up our eyes and we look toward the hill from which come our help, which comes from the Lord. Amen. And we walk toward the light and the love of God. We don't turn to the left and we don't turn to the right, but we keep forward and forward. This word is not an easy word to receive because our flesh wants to do what it wants to do. If you realize and you find something about this that's not tasteful to you, it's probably because you're giving too much attention to what your flesh wants and not enough to what God wants, what your soul needs. Amen. Too often times we give more credit to our carnal existence than to our spiritual existence, which is why, amen, we can excess in different things that are carnal and causes all kinds of issues because, amen, it's, it's amazing, excess Excess, excess access to carnal things causes our spiritual uh, to have problems. It causes us problems spiritually. Too much access to excess of carnal, whatever it might be, can cause us to have problems in our spiritual. So we have to, rock, and sometimes in our flesh, what we have to do is see what's going on. And if we have a draw toward this or toward that, and it's causing us, amen, to, to, to falter and fail and stumble in the things of God, we have to back up. That's what fasting is all about. It's not only about, amen, staying away from food for an hour or two hours or a day or a meal, whatever the time frame you might set for yourself. Amen. You can fast on anything. Stuff that, that's causing you to stumble, amen. That, that car you got that you, that you just spend so much time in, maybe it's time to let it stay parked in the garage for a little while till it's not as important to you. It's not taking the place of Christ in your life, the place of your brother and your sister in your life. You can have that unfair, that hot love toward, amen, one another that pleases God because we are surely of one. There was Adam, from him came Eve, from them came the rest of us. There was no death between us. Amen. No births are coming from a dead woman. Huh? Dead men aren't spawning any, any, uh, or fertilizing any, any, any live eggs. No, no, no. No, what's going on is that life is continuous from generation, generation to generation, which makes us all one. Part of us is living and part of us is dead. But all of us need to walk in the will of God who sent his son to die that we might have life and have it more abundantly. And all that he requires us once we get saved is to live holy. I had a song I wrote. It says, live holy, speak boldly. This is to the saints, only to the saints. For this might be the season. Someone asks a reason of the hope that lies within you. And when they ask that question, they should be able to look at our lives. We shouldn't have to say a word. The Bible said they will know us by our love. Amen. And so thus is it said, amen. Why should I be holy? Because God expects and accepts nothing less. If you don't know what holiness means, get into a good Bible study. Do some research on your own. Figure it out. Amen. Contact us. We'll talk with you about it. Holiness is just God's way of saying, I need you without fault, without blemish in your walk toward me. Until I come, till my son comes to get you. I need you to walk like that and live like that. Heavenly Father, we believe your word. We trust your word, oh God. 
we will do our part, dear God, our best to walk in your word. Look upon us, dear God, just as only you can, oh God. We pray, to God, that you would just touch those who are hearing this word and that they will find the conviction, dear God, if they're not already doing. And, dear God, it will find an amen and an amen to you, oh God, if they are trying to do this word, oh God. And, and, and be encouraged to know that they're not the only ones, oh God. That they too, Lord God, might find their way to you through your son and through your will, dear God. As we love one another, dear God, as your word which said, unfervent, un, unfeignedly, dear God, and fervently. Your name be praised in all things we ask in Jesus' name. Amen. We thank you all for listening to us. Amen. This morning. Amen. Via YouTube or Facebook. Amen. If you go to our website, man, there'll be a place that you can bless us if, so, or led, if you are so led by the Spirit. Amen. And we're here every week. Amen. And there's some sermons online that you can touch base with. Just click on them. Maybe some of those will bless your soul. Amen. Your name, God's name be praised in all things that we do. And we pray that your name will be written in that number. God bless you and keep you is our prayer.